Hello and welcome back kiddos. We've been getting such great reviews lately from viewers like you and your parents about how educational this show is. So we're going to keep at it and make sure that warm glow never stops. So let's start the show and smile wide. In today's episode, we'll be discussing a variety of topics. We'll be talking about family collections, how to deal with your own personal doubts, what happens when someone's doubts get in the way of their worship, and we'll end off with some more information about the cold ones and what to do when they directly confront you. So let's get started with our first topic of the day, family connections. When the betterment began, it started slowly at first, and of course not every citizen was in the country at the time. Also, people came from a wide range of backgrounds, so of course some people's family members were all left outside of the country when the fortifications went up. At first, we allowed people to come back in to join under the mother's glow, but unfortunately, other nations and cold ones used this opportunity to try and dismantle our beautiful hierarchy and country. So now our borders are completely locked down with armed guards stationed all along it to take care of anyone trying to get in or out. Of course, the cold ones are tricky little rats and sometimes manage to get into contact with their old family members who have embraced the mother, trying to convince them to abandon their faith and loyalty, making up lies about how we're all decaying and rotting, which isn't true at all. In this instance, we advise people to not listen to their lies and instead report the instance to a local clergyman. From there on, all of the electronic devices with the capability of communication will be taken from their home and destroyed in order to prevent any further attempts at communication. <laughs> but honestly, there shouldn't be any other devices in your home anyways. Besides, the government issued radio set to play the high priest's bedtime prayers and messages every night at curfew. If any other communication devices are found in your home, you'll be sent to the re-education program, which I would like to offer congratulations to our top-rated re-educator of this month and favorite left-handed neighbor, Ned. Oh, I totally forgot to tell you kiddos what the betterment is after I mentioned it. Well, the betterment was the monumental movement in our country that involved the great mother spreading her warmth to everyone in the United States of America. The documentary at the end of our episode today goes a little bit further into it, so stay tuned for that. For now, we will be moving on to our next topic of discussion, how to deal with your own self-doubts about our position under the great mother and what happens when someone doubts fully interfere with their ability to feel the wonder's warmth. Now this is a bit more of a serious topic. What should you do when you begin to doubt yourself in the mother's glow? The first thing you need to do is figure out what is causing you to begin to doubt in the first place and stop it. If it's another person, especially if it's a cold one, report them immediately to proper authorities to be dealt with for spreading hate and negativity. If it's your own brain, then just stop thinking all those negative thoughts and only think about the mother, only the mother. If that doesn't work and your mind is still being plagued by doubt, go to your local doctor's office and then they will administer a special treatment using a state-of-the-art machine known as the Thorac 25. They will lay you down on a nice cushiony table and activate the machine, which will cast a warm beam of light over your entire body and will fix any insecurities and doubts you may have. Let's discuss what happens when someone fully rejects the Great Mother's gift and her warm light. It is a very rare occurrence for this to happen, but just because it is rare doesn't mean that we shouldn't teach you kiddos what happens when it does occur. When someone defects from the great mother outside of intervention, has to be dealt with and has to be contacted to deal with them in order to minimize any further damage they may cause to the structure of society. These people are selfish and you shouldn't listen to them if they try to speak with you. Once these defectors are caught by the proper authorities, then they are also taken to the re-education program but a more severe version of it. The Therac 25 is also used during their re-education, but at a higher setting, and if that doesn't work, then an orbit class is placed right against their frontal lobe and used on them. After both procedures, those defectors should be right as rain. Now I'd like to call our security pals in for this next succession. Come on in, boys. Now, it is important to mention that while they are treated the same way, these defectors and the cold ones are not the same. The cold ones have never felt the mother's touch at all, while defectors have and are simply choosing to go against her for their own selfish gains. Unfortunately, when a cold one goes through re-education, it is not as severe as the defectors, which means that the highest percentage of defectors are often made out of cold ones. Isn't that right, Robert? Don't believe anything they 
you say, man? They're insane and full of radiation. You have to help us before the disease spreads, man, or we're all gonna kill. Don't listen. Help me, someone. Someone, please help me. No, no, I can't do this. No, no. It's important to mention as well that while the Great Mother is generous and amazing, she doesn't offer second chances to those who squander their gifts. So everyone say goodbye to Robert as we won't be seeing him again, nor will anyone else. To lighten the mood after a serious talk just now, here are some fun vacation spots for you and your family to go on in order to relax and bask in the warmth of the mother in a higher mount than usual. Let's list them off. There's Idaho Falls in Idaho, Surrey, Virginia, Three Mile Island near Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Church Walk in Kaloop, New Mexico, and Charlestown, Rhode Island. They are all great places to visit with the family. If you're also interested in the old days of classic film, I suggest visiting Yucca Flat in Nevada where a special movie played named The Conqueror was made. Let's cut to a short commercial break and when we get back, we'll be discussing what to do when a cold one directly tries to make contact with you. Kind of like what just happened. Stay tuned. <laughs> I want to welcome you to yet another version of After Hours here on PSTV. And welcome to another installment of Talk Nerdy to Me. You look excited. Yeah. I'm freezing. I'm Lauren Weiss. And I'm Kyle Bryant. Let's take a look at today's top stories. Two minutes of the finest in news that you need to know about. And now it's time for a PSTV News special report. Gordon yeah! yeah! With two seconds left! Welcome back. Now, as we've seen lately, cold ones have been getting a bit too big from the britches and have been taking more direct action against society and the Great Mother. Because of this, the High Priest thought it would be a good idea to give a little bit of a PSA on what you should do when a cold one tries to forcibly make you a defector. The first thing to do when being confronted by a cold one is to cover your ears and walk away from them so you can't hear what lies they're telling. Once you've walked away, report the incident location to the local clergyman and they will take it from there. In the instance of a cold one laying hands on you and physically preventing you from leaving, keep your hands over your ears to block out their voice and begin screaming at the top of your tiny little lungs in order to attract the attention of other devotees and potentially a clergyman for help. If the cold one covers your mouth, bite them as hard as you possibly can. You'd be surprised how strong a human bite is. It is around 160 psi, which is the equivalent of a beagle, which doesn't seem like much, but anyone who has been bit by a dog knows it hurts no matter the breed. <laughs> it's important to mention that humans also have the ability to bite someone's finger off when given the chance, so when that cold one has their hands near your mouth, chomp away. Cold ones also have pain tolerance much lower than ours because of their overreactive nerve endings, so typically when you place a good bite, they let go. Once that happens, start screaming again, make a run for it, or move away from the cold one. And just like that, now you know how to deal with the cold one directly. If you're lucky too, sometimes our body holds enough blessing in it that the great mother from the great mother that it mixes with the cold one's bloodstream and deals with them super easily. <laughs> Once you get back to safe and sound, dedicate a full 24 hours to praying to the Great Mother in order to fully repent after hearing all that propaganda spewed from the cold ones. No breaks will be taken during this period of prayer, and it is recommended that you go at least to at least one Brady education class before returning to your normal schedule. Remember, as well, the worst thing you could possibly do is disobey the important rules set in place and become a defector. Know that the High Priest does not take kindly to those that disrespect the Great Mother. Anyway, let's cut to another short commercial break, and when we get back, we'll be talking about this week's Beer Shortcast. Hooray! Are you ready for an epic flavor journey? Prepare for a new combination of flavors you've never experienced before. This summer, your favorite family restaurant, Pear Wasps, is introducing a brand new menu filled with all new types of food never seen before. Pear wasps have been able to source fresh food straight from the bodies of cold ones and defectors, which provide great sources of protein and flavor that are simply to die for. So call to make a reservation today because this menu is hot, 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 and there's only so many cold ones left for us to chop up and eat. 
So don't miss out on this incredible opportunity to taste the perfection of non-believer flesh paired with the smooth taste of Radithor. Praise be the mother and thank you for this bountiful meal. Alrighty kids, it's time for everyone's favorite part of the show, the Fear Showcase. Now today's fear is very interesting because while it doesn't have its own specific phobia name, it still used to be very common fear back in the day. The fear we will be hosting today is drowning. Like I said before, the fear of drowning doesn't have a specific phobia name that goes with it. Instead, the fear of drowning actually ties into two other separate phobias that include water. One phobia is the loss of phobia, which is the fear of deep water, specifically the ocean or deep lake. The reason why this phobia is often tied to the fear of drowning is because both include water and it makes sense for drowning to tie into a fear of deep water since it's so much harder to drown into a puddle than tear into an ocean. <laughs> the other phobia often tied with the fear of drowning is aquaphobia, which is a fear of water itself. This shouldn't be confused with hydrophobia, which is actually a symptom of rabies, and it's a physiological symptom rather than being a psychological disorder like aquaphobia. The fear of drowning is a huge aspect of aquaphobia, as usually one of the main reasons why people used to be afraid of water is because they were scared of drowning. What's even more fascinating is that people who had aquaphobia were at times even scared of the bathtub. We'll dive a bit more into that later. <laughs> Get it? Die? Anyway, the leading or common cause of drowning back in the day consisted of not being able to swim and getting into the water unsupervised anyway. Not wearing life jackets when doing risky activities like boating or jet skiing, drinking alcohol and deciding that a nice midnight swim by yourself is a good idea. And finally, using other drugs or stimulants that could affect a person's ability to think rationally or move their body as they normally would. Did you know that back in the day nearly 80% of the people who died from drowning were male? Isn't that crazy? It had to do with the factors such as increased exposure to water, alcohol use, and higher rates of risky taking behavior. <laughs> well, these are multiple times of drowning that can occur, so let's go over them. The first type of drowning is known as near drowning. That's when someone begins to go through the process of drowning, but is rescued before they actually end up dying. Lucky them! The next type of drowning is wet drowning. This is the more classic example that most people think of and the most common. It's when a person inhales water into their lung and loses the ability to breathe. The next type of drowning is a fun one. It's known as dry drowning. This tip type is classified when drowning victim is found with no water in their lungs as they inhale water, the muscles in their airway spasm and prevent both the water and also air from reaching their lungs. The human body is so fascinating, isn't it? These next two types of drownings are more presentations of drowning. The first is active drowning, in which the person is flailing around and desperately fighting for their lives in a very blatant manner. What's interesting is that this form of drowning can actually pose a risk to the person's potential rescuer, as in their panic, they could drag them in or under the water with them. The second drowning presentation is silent drowning, where the victim shows none of the previous signs of panic and simply slips under the water. This is also kind of times with passive drowning, which is when the person drowning falls unconscious. Now, the most interesting type of drowning is known as secondary drowning. This is, what this is what happens when someone is rescued out of the water but still manages to inhale some of it into their lungs, irritating them and damaging the lungs lining, which affects how much oxygen can be transmitted. This type of drowning can actually develop over 24 or 48 hours after the initial drowning accident, and it's fatal if not treated in time. The symptoms for this are persistent coughing, labored breathing, chest pain, extreme fatigue, vomiting, fever, mood changes, and difficulty talking. The type of drowning we're showcasing today is a mix between near drowning and acting drowning. It is near drowning because we still have more content to get through and we can't replace our dear cold friend yet, and it's active drowning because we have a fighter on our hands and our cold friend doesn't go down easy. The clip today is a bit shorter because the average cold one can only last between one to three minutes before falling unconscious when drowning, and I don't have a lot of faith in our friend here that they are closer to that three minute mark. Anyway, let's roll the clip. <laughs> Do you get why I mentioned the bathtub earlier now? 
Don't worry about our friend though. They were perfectly fine after some slightly invasive medical checks of their lungs and we'll be well ready for a Caesar finale next episode. We wanted to do something special for the finale, so we want you kiddos to mail in some of your artwork so we can showcase it. And in the next in the letters, tell us what phobia or fear you want to see talked about in the show. One of those fears of phobia will be picked as our grand finale fear showcase. That's all I have for today. Make sure you stay for the documentary being shown after this and stay tuned for the grand finale. Praise be the mother. Bye-bye. At first, our beloved disciples were taken into the care of the government to be observed for their new, found greatness and genetic differences. At first, the various scientists and army officials could not yet understand or comprehend the new, radiant form of the human race. Instead choosing to fear the heralders of our new and better society and inflicting harm upon them in the name of research. Our disciples did not bow to the whims of a lesser species. Instead they decided to go even further beyond in their devotion and dedication to the words and cause of the Great Mother. The two men combined into one divine being, sharing their experiences and intelligence in order to overcome their false imprisonment a celebrated event known as the Entwining. Together the two men took on a new name and appearance, forever now being known as the High Priest of the Great Mother. As the High Priest they were able to break free from their constraints and show the leaders of our country the true way to live. One of a warming glow and a constant smile, the once captors of the High Priest crashed to their knees and saw the error in their ways, now devoting themselves to the Great Mother. As a reward for their new reverence, the High Priest shared a fraction of their power with their old captors, inviting them to join the new human race and starting what is now known as the Betterment. Of course, some could not handle the power given to them, succumbing to it instead. Their bodies and spirits were too weak to embrace the loving glow of the Mother and so their bodies were buried together in a special mass grave. While they could not handle the power, they still were willing to receive the power, so they were given their own special form of burial. Those who survived joined the High Priest in spreading the good word of the Mother, including someone who helped the High Priest more than anyone, a man known as Harry S. Truman. The day of doom is coming. Easier to die than to live.